For those of you who have not yet seen the sign, and I'm sure you all have, it's stunning, shocking, spectacular, and uh, we'll turn it on after we're done here. Uh, I don't want to be upstaged. So, what is this giant sign? I've done a little bit of research into Krabby Joe's. I've done a little bit of research into the, uh, the parcel, basically, in order to find out more about the landscape of what that is. Uh, as we understand it, Krabby Joe's existed from 1933 until 2007 Christmas Eve. Uh, I was there on the closing night with some of you, actually, uh, taking fantastic pictures and crying in my beer over the loss of that place. Um, it is uh, famous for Barfly, the movie Barfly itself was a character in the movie. Uh, the sign is prominent in the film at the beginning and at the very end. Uh, but it's also got ties to literary, uh, Los Angeles literary history, especially with Charles Bukowski. I see it written on your shirt. Very good. Uh, there's not too much that I can say about the business itself, but I do want to read uh, a few pieces of history on the property that you might find interesting. I was able to do a little address search back into the historic Los Angeles Times. And way back in 1892, it was residential. This entire neighborhood was not commercial. It was basically one and two family homes, sometimes with a business on the ground floor, residential above. Uh, way back in 1892, the address of Krabby Joe's was, uh, it was a saloon. And according to this article on uh, Vigorous protests against increasing saloons on Main Street. They had this to say. The businessmen on the street state that the class <laughs> of men changed. who frequent the numerous saloons on the east side of Main Street drive ladies from that side of, this, from, of the street and, to, uh, and they cross over diminishing the businesses on the east side of Main Street. Uh, so we actually did have saloon issues in 1892 with Main Street. Uh, we have eight saloons on the east side of Main Street. And the tax collector reported that number 656 South Main Street uh, had a delinquent, delinquent saloon license. So back then there were issues even still. Uh, by 1894, we had a doctor at that, uh, at that address. The doctor was Dr. C. Edgar Smith. He specialized in varicose veins and ruptures, uh, but he also stated that he uh, diseases of women are skillfully treated. I'll just leave that out. Uh, 1898, there is actually some bland history that took place there too. Uh, there were many different fraternal orders in Los Angeles at the turn of the last century, and in 1898 we had things like the Ladies of the Maccabees, the Order of the Eastern Star, Daughters of the Golden West, Woodmen of the World, but we also had the Grand Army of the Republic. And Dr. Wilder, Mr. and Mrs. Wilder, made their, uh, made their home at 656 South Main Street. And of course, what we find is uh, the, they hosted the Grand Army of the Republic at their residence, and the Corps presented them with a punch bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it's not all that great. No. Of course, we have this wonderful instance. In 1903, a man who resided at that address on Main Street uh, was arrested for assaulting a 10-year-old girl. I won't get into it, but it's in full detail of his assault on a 10-year-old girl at that address. If you want it, I'll just hand it to you later. <laughs> a few months later in 1903, we find one last instance of history before the place actually was, the residential was demolished and we have the current building uh, in the 1930s. We have uh, a brute assaults his mistress because she refuses to support him. Uh, made a frantic beast by the refusal of his mistress to resume her business of supporting him, George Walsh, a laborer, viciously assaulted Ella Powers yesterday morning at a lodging house, South Main. For two years, the woman has kept Walsh in clothes and pin money, but she got tired of the job two days ago and left him to rustle for himself. 
Yesterday morning, Walsh went to the woman's room and ordered her to go with him. His aforetime mistress refused, and Walsh picked up a table knife and jabbed her in the side. Fortunately, the corset steels prevented any wounds. <laughs> Walsh then struck the woman on the side of the head, afflicting a gash about an inch long. The force of the blow was so great that he broke his knife. As Powers, as Powers' woman dropped from the blow, Walsh kicked her in the mouth with such force that she was rendered unconscious. He brought his leg back for another kick. When the landlady entered, Walsh then quieted down. The landlady sent for police immediately, but before arrival, the patrol wagon came. Uh, blah, blah, blah. When the police arrived, the alleged officer and Walsh were nowhere to be found. The women's injuries were treated at the receiving hospital, and she said she would not prosecute. So that's the tidbits of information that I could get on the property itself. No, not a lot on Krabby Joe's. I think many of its stories just remain unpublished. With that, I think we shall celebrate Krabby Joe's, not with booze, but with a lighting. Uh, let's get that sign lit up so we can all drop a jaw and worship at the new home of Krabby Joe's. Before we disperse, Kim has something to say because I can't okay. explain it as well as she can. Yeah. There is a disparity in the coloring yeah. of this sign. You'll notice that it's pink and blue except for the Y, which is blue blue. Did you look at it? I would suggest.